Welcome to Cadence Design Systems Fidelity Tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use our fully integrated environment Fidelity in short videos of a few minutes. Today we'll discuss how to generate a surface-to-volume mesh for aerodynamic simulation of a transonic wing. I have imported our target test case in the geometry context of Fidelity Express. It's the Onera M6 transonic wing. This is a swept, untwisted, and tapered wing with low aspect ratio created from the symmetric Onera D airfoil. The trading edge is blunt and the wing tip is rounded. The imported CAD geometry includes three assembly boundaries, the trading edge, the suction side, and the pressure side. For the subsonic flow regime, the size of the domain for a flow around a wing simulation should involve at least 20 mean aerodynamic cord length in each direction with respect to the body of interest. We can create a semi-sphere using a primitive centered at the wing leading edge with a radius of 13 meters. We're going to rename the two assembly boundaries as EXT for the external condition and MIR for the mirror condition. Lastly, we can create a cube primitive around the wing. This will be used as a volume refinement box later on in the mesh setup. In the domain context, the CFD domain is created with the wing and the semi-sphere assemblies. The only task here is to properly assign the boundary conditions as far field for the EXT boundary and mirror for the MIR boundary. We should also position the seed point inside the domain. This will indicate where the mesh will be generated. We can now move to the mesh context, where a Hexpress mesh setup containing the domain is created. The surface-to-volume mesh generation approach is selected in the family tree under the mesher choice. This method creates first a surface mesh and then a volume mesh. Elements can be all tetrahedra or a hexadominant with the presence of tetrahedra, pyramids, and prisms. The SUV method is very suitable for external aerodynamic meshes since it enables mesh anisotropy at leading and trading edge regions. Let's set the core cell type to hexadominant and set the initial cell size to 0.25 meters. This will determine the largest cell size in our domain. Next, we must activate the Insert Buffer and Viscous Layers checkbox. This will allow the insertion of viscous layers at the solid boundaries of the wing and enable the transition from the boundary layer prisms to the hexadominant Euler mesh. Following the tree structure, we can review the settings of each boundary. The external and mirror boundaries need to have the buffer and viscous layer option turned off. This will guarantee that no buffer layer will be inserted there. By selecting the wing assembly, we can impose local refinement at the wing solid boundaries. Let's apply a uniform refinement with cell size of 7.8 mm and 12 divisions for curvature refinement with minimum cell size of 3 mm. The diffusion level is set to 4 to guarantee a smooth transition between cell layers of different refinement levels. Next, we can include viscous layers by defining the first layer thickness, the number of equal first layers, the stretching ratio, and the number of layers. The SUV approach will use an extrusion method which can maintain a more constant total viscous layer thickness without distorting the Euler mesh. Mesh anisotropy is enforced at the trailing edge by activating the option Anisotropic Narrow Surface under its local tab. The idea here is to insert 8 cells in the thickness direction while maintaining the local cell size distribution along the span. Mesh anisotropy at the leading edge is achieved by including a proximity refinement using the proximity manager at the top of the family tree. We create one set containing the wing pressure side and another set containing the wing section side. We want to specify an anisotropic edge refinement of the type linear with the cell size going from 0.5 mm at the root to 0.3 mm at the tip. Note that we choose the smallest y coordinate as the start definition rule because the span direction is along the y axis with the coordinates increasing from root to tip. Lastly, we insert a refinement geometry from the icon at the top of the family tree and select the previously created cube primitive. The goal is to have all the cells inside the zone no larger than 0.015625 meters, which corresponds to four refinement levels. The mesh generation is launched in parallel on 12 cores.
The result is a SUV volume mesh with approximately 3.25 million cells, generated in 8 minutes and 12 seconds. The maximum skewness is 0.8361, which represents good grid quality. The anisotropic features can be checked at the trading edge, showing proper edge capturing, and 8 cells along the thickness. At the leading edge and wing tip, we notice the clustering of cells growing along the cord while respecting the span-wise local refinement. A view from two cutting planes shows the proper insertion of viscous layers as well as the buffer layer reconnection to the Euler mesh. From here, we could set up an external aerodynamics computation in the simulation context, but this is the topic of another Tutorial Tuesday episode. Thank you for watching! If you liked this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button to subscribe to our channel for more upcoming content like this. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please drop us a line down below or connect with us on LinkedIn, which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a great Tuesday!